Hey guys, welcome into the Poker Reborn channel. Today we're going to get into the next perk in the perk guide, Student. I'm going to give you my deep detail analysis of this perk, followed by going into the Poker Roundtable in which community members come together to talk about this perk in full, while also giving you a grade from 1 to 5, 1 being great, 5 being not so great. You can check out the full scale in the description below, and then finally going into the general discussion. Quick reminder that we're going to be separating the perk guide from the Roundtable so you have two separate experiences going forward into Tier 2. If this content does help you or you know it can help other people, please hit that like so it does get monetized a little more, as well as subscribe or hit that bell so that when these videos drop, you're on top of it. Besides that, join the Discord. We got a lot of community events going on. People are coming in uh, a lot more. We're going to be having some crazy things. If you want to be a part of one of these videos of the round table, join the Discord. Let us know. It's in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into the student perk guide. As always, we have to look at the basic description to get a better understanding of the perk itself. So what it says is gain additional 20% XP from battle. At the 11th character level, you gain an additional perk point and this perk becomes inert. Playing the Manhunter Origin, you're indebted get a perk point refunded at the 7th character level. On the surface, it's pretty cut and dry. You get 20% extra experience points from level 2 all the way up to level 11. You're also getting refunded a perk point at level 11 giving you two perk points total at the end. Now let's get into the deep dive. To start, I'd like to squash a bug that's gone around the community a little bit. I have seen it in waves, but this should help most of the viewers here. If you knew this, great. If you didn't, this is great for you. Ultimately, you get 20 experience points only through the time that you get it up to level 11. You do not get extra 20 experience points beyond level 11. At level 11, when it becomes nullified, you get one perk point back. Speaking of perk points, it's very important to understand that you always get 10 perk points. What I mean is you don't get a perk point until level 2, all the way up to level 11. That's a total of 10. Student still gives you 10 total perk points. It just gets refunded that perk point when you got student all the way to the end at level 11. In terms of the verbiage, it's very important to understand that it's per battle that you're getting 20% per battle. If you are not killing a lot of things, your scaling is gonna be a bit slower. But if you kill a lot of things, that 20% can very well put you ahead of the competition. This is where it gets really interesting. I'm gonna show you this graph. It's gonna show you the levels. It's gonna show you the normal experience points that you have to accumulate in order to level up per each level. The next one is gonna be when students applied to those levels and the differentiating how much you're actually saving from each level. As we dive into the numbers, I wanna give a quick shout out to Turtle225 for helping me refine my numbers. I had the same numbers as him, but my setup was definitely more complicated than his. So I am kind of using that as my template. However, guys, to check out his guides, it'll be in the description below. Awesome guy, awesome content. As you look at this chart, understand that level one, you start with zero XP. To get to level two, you have to accumulate 200 XP. As you hit 200 XP, you don't go back down to zero, you continue. So from 200, you go up to 500 XP, that's 300 total XP, which ends up being 300 XP accumulated from that point, and so on. So you continuously are rising your XP from zero all the way up to 15,000 XP, which ends up being level 11. That's very critical to know because of how much you're actually saving. Now with the basic leveling out of the way, we can look at the normal chart, go all the way down to level 11, because this is where we're going to look at our bread and butter. At 15,000 XP to get on a normal chart, to go to student, you only have to accumulate 12,500 XP. This is a total saving, if you use it from level 1 all the way down, of 2,500 XP saved. I hope that was pretty easy to track just based on the understanding of the numbers on this chart. But now it's going to get a little more deep. So from level 1 up to level level two, you're saving yourself 33 experience points. Now from level two to level three, you're saving yourself a grand total of 83. Now here's where on my chart uh, got a little crazy, but I want to add it in. And it's also ultimately you're going from 33 to 80, which means from level two to level three, you're saving yourself 50 points in that span. You're saving 84 total points between level three and level four. This is why I didn't want to make it too confusing, but I want you to understand that you have to look at it in between the two levels. But ultimately, down the line, you can see exactly what you're accumulating in terms of what you're saving through those levels. I'm sure you can understand why I left that metric out of there, but ultimately just understand what you see on the screen in that third column is your total saved by that level. So at level five, you're saving yourself 333 
experience points. But from five to six is where you see a real considerable jump. You're going from 333 to 583. That is a total save in between those two levels of 250. Now, this is important because from this point on, you're gonna be saving a real considerable amount in terms of your level to level basis. So I wanna split the graph up real quick so we can break down a little more interesting numbers, which will be brought up later on. But ultimately, from level one all the way to level five, you're saving yourself a grand total of 333 experience points out of 2,000. With the first bracket out of the way, let's assume that you get student perk at level five. This would mean from level six all the way to level 11, you would save yourself 2,167 experience points out of a grand total of 15,000 total experience points. I do hope this graph helps. We will revisit these numbers later on. I'm gonna twist your arm a little bit with this next information, but hear me out. Ultimately, you have two bros. You have the normal bros and you have the student bros. The student bros are getting 20% extra XP per combat, where the normal bros aren't. But let's say for a second the normal bro is killing more enemies than the student bro. For those who didn't know, when you kill an enemy, 20% of the XP goes towards the person who killed them, and the 80% of the XP goes towards the rest of the party. So let's imagine for a second that the normal bro ends up killing three raiders and the student bro kills one raider. Raiders total XP count is 250, which means that if you kill one of them, the killer gets 50 XP out of that 250. Mind you, as I break this down, all the experience point is going to be split between the two bros, not a party of 12, but ultimately the normal bro ends up killing three raiders, which is a total accumulation of 150 XP automatically going to him. The student bro ends up getting 50 XP automatically going to him because he only killed one. With 800 XP being left over, it gets split in half. 400 goes to the student bro, and 400 goes to the normal bro. Now the normal bro is sitting in at 550 XP, and the student bro is sitting in at 450 XP. When you add student to this, 20% is 90, which makes it 540 XP. So really, they're very close. Although, if you go to three kills for the student and five kills for the regular bro, the student surpasses the normal brother. With these numbers in front of you, it's very clear that just because you have students doesn't mean that you're flying past the competition. However, when you are getting kills, you're definitely scaling much faster. Students on average need 17% less experience in order to reach the next level compared to a normal bro. This is very important because again, it does fluctuate. Don't always get hung up on just simply 20% experience points because every battle is different. Now for the kryptonite section. So this isn't the easiest kryptonite perk, but for what it's worth, there's one complaint that definitely comes up a lot, and that's the fact that when you pick this perk at level two, you have to wait until level three to get a substantial perk that helps your brother either survive or kill at a more accelerating rate. What I mean also by this is, you're going from level one all the way to level three before you see your first perk point. Now for the perk synergies. Anything that continuously boosts or stacks with student is going to be incredibly synergized. Starting with Potion of Knowledge at 100% experience gain over three battles. Good night. You're talking about 20% that's already being added with student. With this 100%, that's 120% extra XP point per battle, three battles. That That is beyond fantastic. Uh, if you wanna scale quickly, this is definitely the way to do it. Furthering this trend, you have yourself the drill sergeant from the retinue. He makes it so that your men get 20% more experience at level 1 with 2% less at each further level. So at level 2, when if you ended up getting student, you go at 40 experience points. At level 3, you're going down to 38, level 4, 36, and etc. This is an incredible way to get those early game bros all the way to the top quickly. Another great synergy is the training hall. The training hall you can only find in the north. You cannot find in the southern city states, just those alone. However, what this does is it boosts your XP to a certain threshold when you pay for the certain training. First training is the sparring fights. This is a 50% XP boost for the next battle. Veterans lesson is 35% extra XP for the next three battles. And finally, rigorous schooling, which is plus 20% extra XP for the next five battles. When you pair this together, it's incredibly beautiful in synergy. 
I didn't end up doing a trait section, but that's because only one trait fits the bill, and that is Bright. Bright is 10% extra XP. You can't find this on every brother, so if you want to check that out, you can see which brothers can in the fandom wiki page. However, this pairs incredibly with student because you go from 20 up to 30 XP, and the 10 XP goes beyond level 11. Apprentice is one of the best recruits paired with students simply because they come with a plus 10 extra XP per battle. Now, while this is important, it can also happen that you get Bright as well, adding another 10%. That's a total of 40% XP all the way through level 11 and 20% beyond that. How about a historian? Have you ever found a great one of those? They have great events, plus you can find stars in really nice areas and make them something. If you do, it'll be well worth your time because they come with a 15% extra XP boost. That's 35 extra XP boost with student. If you come across a mason, mason have a plus 5% XP boost. May not be huge, but it does stack well at 25% on student. This one is going to be the teeter. Ultimately, wild men are the wild card. They come with a special trait that is negative 15 XP. When you add student to this, that's a plus 5 XP. It's better than nothing, and it can help them scale very nicely. The final nod for backgrounds is going to go to the Manhunter Origin indebted brothers not normal indebted but the manhunters indebted ultimately they have negative 25 percent xp gain and you want to build your force off these brothers getting them to cap out at level seven as quickly as possible can be the strategy to help your brothers flourish faster with all of it being said, it's very important to understand that you could have an apprentice who ends up having Bright, who has student, who went to the training hall, who has the start drill sergeant, who's using the potion. He can level up astronomically fast compared to other brothers. And this is a strategy that you can use. It doesn't have to be an apprentice. It doesn't have to be a Bright bro. Stacking all these other objects together in order to make the XP go through the roof is definitely an amazing synergy. Picking student between level 1 to level 5. Now I get it, you might be shaking your head saying, no way, what are you talking about? If I'm going to pick it, I'm going to pick it at level 1. Now hear me out. The synergy of doing this has two implications. From level 1 to level 5, you're only going to save yourself 333 experience points with student. If you decide you have a brother that you really want to build up, you want him to have student, but you need to keep him alive, or you want to build him a certain way, scale him quickly, you can do that at the cost of 333 experience points, but also saving from level 6 all the way to level 11, 2167 experience points. And number two, if you pick student at level five, you're setting yourself up better for masteries later on. What I mean is at level five, you're looking at tier four perks, which is all the weapon masteries. And one of the things that many players make as a mistake is picking a mastery because it's right there. Where if you just wait to level 11, you'll be refunded a perk point, leaving you two perk points at level 11. One for whatever perk you wanted at level 11 and the other for a mastery. Early game synergy can work fantastic for those brothers you want to keep around for a long time. Use those fodders to soak up the damage, meanwhile the student brothers are mopping away the competition. Late game synergy can be fantastic. If you have a brother who ends up dying and it's hard to fill that void, you need to recruit either way. You need to fill up your ranks. So having student to get the guys back on par with the brothers around them is going to be paramount. With that information out of the way, let's get into the perk combos. Honestly, in terms of perk combos, there isn't a single perk that's going to work better than another perk with Student. Student is universal in the way that it helps you get to other perks much faster, especially the later tier perks, which can be very valuable. So what do you think about this perk? Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to leave a rating from 1 to 5. And also, if you did like this content, please hit the like, subscribe, hit that bell so you know when the next video comes up. And also, join the Discord to be a part of the discussion. Without further ado, let's get into the Pugga Roundtable. All right, guys, now we're going to be getting into the round table in which community members are coming together to talk about this perk, of course, in depth. They're going to be giving that you a rating from 1 to 5. Uh, and if you want to check that rating scale out, it'll be in the description section below. Without further ado, we're going to give the first one to Carvajal. What do you think about student? All right, I think students have won. When bros are low level, they're really squishy and can't hit anything. They're just really, really bad. So student makes those bros level quicker, so they're badder for a short, they're bad for a shorter amount of time. The difficulty of camps, especially in the early and the middle game, depends greatly on how many perks you have and the stats of your team. So when you combo student, especially with like the drill sergeant or just any uh, other higher level people, you accelerate the growth of your team and its strength. For any bro that you anticipate will make it to level 11, 
I think it's worth it to take student just because you're going to get there and you'll get there quicker. And there's no net loss of student because you refund a perk at max level. A lot of people will be like, oh, you lose a perk. No, you don't. You get it back. So there's no loss of taking student, except you get one perk at level 11 as opposed to level one, which for me, I don't think is that big of a deal. So I say take student on anyone you think will make it to level 11. Very good. Um, yeah, a one. Solid one. Have you given a one yet on any of these perks yet? I can't remember. I gave a one to recover. I gave a... I think it's just recover at this. I think I gave a one to Colossus as well. Okay, I was wondering if that was going to be the, the first breach of one. So. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, pretty cut and dry. I mean, it is... It. Yeah, I like it. Very good. Yeah. I don't know if anybody... Ha Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> All right. Well, then we're going to move on to the newest member of the round table. It's gonna be Blahman. What do you think about student? All right, so I give student a solid two. The only reason I can't give it a one is because, you know, if you got a fodder guy, like you just can't give him student. Like, he's gonna die before he learns anything. You know, that's the only thing. 90%, I ain't gonna say 90, probably about 40, not even 40, probably, 80% of the guys that you pick up are going to be fodder. You're going to pick up more fodder than anything. So it's going to be hard, especially in the beginning, it's going to be hard to even think of giving a guy a student, you know, when he's terrible. You're going to want to give him something like Colossus to boost him up or Nine Lives or Fast Adapt, at least for that first one. And if you don't take it first, then you're probably not going to take it. That's the only reason I gave it a two. But it's an excellent perk. If you use it for your late game bros. It's like it's a perk that's only for late game bros. There's some perks that are universal for everyone. This is only for the guys that you're gonna you plan on keeping. Because if you don't plan on keeping the guy, students really a waste of time. Right on. Yeah. I mean, I think the the great analysis there is for though it's it's for those perennial bros, the ones that you you want for a long term. I think that's really the key. So all right. Well, does anybody have any questions for Blomin? Well, then we're going to move on. Despicable Dick, what do you think about student? So this is one for me. I'd like to uh, say first that the XP boost is nice, but before the last DLC, it was even stronger because the only way we could boost XP gain for a brother was training Hall, which has three options. And, well, the worst thing about that, uh, that is that it's rare. There was not much choice if we wanted to boost the xp gain now we have a couple of more options because we can have three sergeant and it's quite easy to get one because you can survive or bad bro into the fight and let them be struck down so you can have an early three sergeant quite easily and also if you start the south or you go to the south you can get a lot of xp potions uh knowledge potions they're called so they boost the XP gain even more and you know you can boost it even further because when you have such so many boosts you can just let the guy that you want to level up finish off most of the enemies mostly brigands early game or mid game because they're the easiest to fight and now after the last DLC this XP boost from students is not that big of a deal but 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 you can skip a row or, or tier of perks with this perk with student and a lot of people pick this second level so the first level up because well you get the most value of from the xp boost but well i pick it up to the sixth level even because sometimes i want to skip one of the third first three row rows that's most common but sometimes i have a brother that i don't know what what he will be or which weapon will he use because maybe i'm waiting for some better gear from prizes or from riding caravans and noble armies or maybe i'm just looking for a good named item and with the student perk i can just skip the fourth row which is the weapon spec row and go on give him something later on even the fifth row is skippable because Actually, in my opinion, the only essential mm, perk for a lot of brothers is underdog. And even though I don't give it to any everyone. And uh, with this perk, you can go heavier on the latest uh, perks. Like Berserk, Killing Frenzy, Duelist for some builds. Like a Fencer or Duelist. So, there are a lot of options. And 
only student gives those options. Yeah, I completely agree. And I thought the things that you brought up, like some of the scaling portions of Blazing Deserts to make it a lot easier, like Potion of Knowledge, being able to get that quickly definitely helps that scaling process. I think that's a really, really good point there. Does anybody have any questions for him? Well, then with that being said, then we're going to move on to our next guy. And by the way, this is another new member to the round table, of course, Mr. Meepo, well known on the on the Discord. But anyways, Meepo, what do you think about Student? All right. Student, I would have to rate a solid three because I don't use it with all my brothers. It also depends on the playthroughs I'm doing. If I'm going Lone Wolf, of course, I'm going to invest in it. Gladiators, I've even found myself investing in um, picking up the Wildman with the negative 15% XP gain. I often always take it for them just to offset that a little bit. Other than that, great perk. Scaling well with the refund point at the end. 20 more XP. Yeah. If you got room, take it. Anything else or is that it? That's it. Fair enough. Um, does any, yeah, I mean, one of the big things that I like that you brought up was Wildman with the, I believe it's negative 20 or negative 25. I think it's 25. 25, right? Is it 25? Okay. I think it's 15. Yeah, I thought it was 15. All right, so it is 15. Yeah, that is, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, it is, it did end up being, it is 15, so. But does anybody have any questions for Meepo? Uh, I have one. Yep, so, go for it. Uh, you said that you don't give it a high number because uh, you don't use it on every brother. So, yeah, it, it's quite clear that we don't use it on every brother because bad brothers, just like Plum and Set, don't live long enough especially on starts like peasant militia or Manhunters. exactly and that was pretty much what i was trying to say there reputable <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is like the only reason i'm not in rows is because i can't i don't feel the need to put on every one of the brothers that i hire but All right. so so do All you right. prioritize something that helps you with keeping brothers alive first other than students so what's the reason why you don't pick oh students okay for... well when i get a brother i pretty much do like a check and balance system seeing where his stars are where the starting stats are and then from there i pretty much assign a value to him and if i think he's going to survive he's going to be really great in late games he can fill one of my roles that i wanted to play on my line then i'll give him the student if if i'm not sure or if I'm just like, okay, is this guy really going to fill a role or is he just going to be a filler? Then that is when I will opt out for like Colossus, for instance. I also really love fast adaptation and crippling strikes when I want to have some fun, as Shinobi would say. That's awesome. <laughs> that kind of explain? Yeah. That's very good. I like that last part. <laughs> uh, all right. Anybody else? All right, then we're going to move on to the next guy here. Shinobi, what do you think about student? I'm going to give student a one. <clears throat> Any bro can take it. This nonsense of fodder bros not getting it. Sure, let them, let them feel happy. Let them learn a little bit before they die. Come on, guys. Can't oppress fodder bros like that anymore. Perfect for wild men. If you're lucky enough to get the barbarian, it's great for him. Dumb bros. It's fantastic. If you're doing a cultist run, everybody knows you want to pile up on the Dumb Brothers. Really, anybody can have it. Plus, for me, it's kind of a, a perk in the bank, so I don't get an itchy finger and take something that I don't need yet. As soon as I hit level 11, boom, we can get that Indom, Berserk, whatever we were holding off on. Just it's It's fantastic. Plus, if you stack this perk, your Drill Sergeant, some Potions of Knowledge, go out there you can power level a new bro pretty quick throw in the training hall like that guy is getting close to double experience if not a little bit more every single fight real good way to power level if you lose a bro late game and need to get somebody up there or you know if you're like me and pick up that hedge knight who's only about level three or four good to throw all those on him anything else sir no oh, that'll that'll do it rolling on that one rolling on that one <laughs> Isn't that one? <laughs> I love it. I love it, and I like the I, I like that you brought up the training, uh, the training ground. That's a that's a very big one too that you can definitely help oh, with, with scaling. It's huge. So, I love yeah, it. If you yeah. get that lone wolf campaign going, first stop should be the training hall. Very good. Buy the second training for him and go out and start hacking heads off raiders. Right. All right. Does anybody have any questions for him? I have one yep, question. Go ahead. Yep. So, are you putting student 
on your fodder bros because because you want them to die faster? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was just seeing if if that was the reason. And you're just being nice to them, being like, you're going to die, I might as well give you a perk as opposed to just giving you like nine lives or classes to make them suffer. No, I hate nine lives so much. It just, it always slaps me in the face and laughs at me. At me. Alright, yeah, that's all. Oh my gosh, fair enough. I want I want my guys to feel like they're learning something. When really yeah. they're just learning about the grave there. They just, uh, well, I mean, they you just know, they're, they're going to the learn. Guy. Learn how to die with honor for whatever the company name happens to be that day. So, essentially you're teaching them to read? And then yeah, hey guys. You know, yeah. Alright, I like that. You put on the battlefield. Okay, so these are the moves we learned in class today, and then they die. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, does anybody else have any questions for him? Well, then I'm going to roll into mine. Uh, this is going to be the first, not the only, but definitely the first number one for me. And it's not so much about the, the things that are completely right, but also the things that are wrong. The things that are wrong about this perk in a way is, and this is just my personal opinion, kind of going back to the beginning here, is, is ultimately when you have, I like to get my fodder uh, to be star fodder. So I don't, when I say star fodder, I mean, uh, while it may not have worked for Shinobi, I like using that fast adaptation right away so they can like, can at least kill something uh, and if it's a detrimental bro I will throw on that nine lives over this however I have had it where I had planned to have more fodder looking bros that turned out to be pretty good is that very often no it's not but the other thing too is being able to decipher who gets it in the very early game is kind of tough because if you do it right away you might hinder some of the things with your brothers like uh, not having the perk not having a, a scaling going on within your group I only put it on bros that I see a future with even if they are just a backup I really like that idea but even with those little bit of those little drawbacks I'll call it the big things that matter the most to me is the stacks let's uh well actually let's kind of look at the perk itself so student is a perk that scales 20 percent extra xp gain so with that extra gain you are scaling much quicker obviously at level 11 it gets cut off you don't get any more extra 20 percent experience past level 11 however you do get a perk point point back at level 11 so instead of one perk point you're getting two so that refunded at the end of it all so really this perk is a light as air perk that that gives gifts you back what you had already put in at level one the reason I think it does it that way is because you're not getting a perk at level 2. You're not getting an extra perk at level 2. You are you have to wait till level 3 to be able to get that and then the scaling goes a little bit quicker and eventually you pass your bros who are already on the scale. So whether it's a drawback or not, that's up to the user to decide. But for me, the scales are everything. The, the scaling of this is everything. Before you didn't have these scales with a uh, student, at least not as in depth. So the Potion of Knowledge, 100% extra XP for three fights, that's insane. That's fantastic. You throw it on a bro that you know is going to be the king of your group, he's going to scale really fast. Drill Sergeant is one of my, it is probably my favorite retinue in the very early game because for every level you go down 2% starting at 20. So level 1 into level 2 is 20 extra percent of XP and then level three, or going into level three, is 18, 16, so on and so forth. You add that together, you have a brother who's scaling at a ridiculous rate. Not even, not. I mean, that's not even including the training grounds again on your top bros. That's not including the the, per, the trait that is bright. That's an, I believe, that's an extra 10%, I believe, for your uh, XP boost, so you, you tack that on. You could talk about some of the other classes, some of the other, uh, like the Apprentice. The Apprentice, Apprentice, you get a boost as well, as well as the Miller, you get an extra XP boost as well. These things are so important, uh, or it's the Mason. Mason gets a, gets a boost of 5%. But the Mason. Mason, the Mason, yep. So really the big thing here, when, I, when I'm trying to get at is, when you the scaling now can be astronomical. I mean, you can scale, if you are, well established in your group if you have brothers that you're going into and you're saying these guys are awesome they have potential um you can scale incredibly incredibly quick and picking and choosing your fights properly is huge as well another thing that this like piggybacking that idea the one fodder that i do give it to would be indebted so like indebted especially in the manhunter run you can only get to level seven to be able to to skyrocket those lower level bros and get the really good ones leveled up quickly so that you have a well-established 
group of guys by day 100 is to me paramount. I think it's very important to do these things. And also with indebted, while they can be really, they can either be really terrible fodder that you're just throwing in there, you don't need it, or I've had plenty of good indebted brothers. So having that paired together can be really helpful as well. At the end of the day, this perk has very little downside in my opinion. One other thing I do wanna bring up is the brother because I brought up the guys that are bright already. They already have extra XP that's being brought to the table. But just as Meepo had talked about with wild men, it's very important to understand that wild men come with a disadvantage in the first place because at negative 15% XP growth, it's that can be a huge hindrance. Even if you are grab, it, even if you are grabbing more perks, it still is working against you because you're crawling to the finish line unless you have a really good wildman. With this perk, you're kind of buffering it, but you are you do have to wait an extra level to be able to get a perk that can be more substantial, for instance, like Colossus or Recover because of that really high fatigue or you know whatever the case may be, whatever your situation. But at the end of the day, you are scaling. You are scaling quickly. You just have to be smart about it. Late hires, there's a big deal, obviously, because you know you're gonna have like hedge knights. You're gonna have all these guys in late game. You're gonna lose guys in the late game. Really good brothers. If you're playing the game to the Iron Man potential, you're gonna lose good brothers. And when you do, you need a way to come back. And that that revival in this game, one of the best features of this game is revival. And that's not a perk, it's nothing, you know, nothing, there's no like set thing to it. But when you're playing this game and you lose a great brother and you find somebody who, who can fill that role, fill that need, and he can come in, make it up with your brothers really quickly, it's a very special thing to feel and be a part of. So is there other perks I pick, you know, in, in tier one? Absolutely. I would not pick this perk past probably level five just because you're losing out on that scaling, but maybe four. I don't know. It, just, it really depends on the brother. There's some perks I really want for certain brothers to keep them alive, but ultimately it is a very, very solid one. Does anybody have any questions? Then what we're going to do from here, guys, is we're going to jump into the general discussion. Despicable. You can kick us off, man. What do you What do you want to say? Okay, so there are two more points uh, why students best. First is sometimes we get good brother, but he's based at luck somewhere. Like he's slow morale because he's a nomad, or his fat is not there, or health, or male defense, or male attack, so, something like this. But he has some stars, and we know that this is a good bro, and he'll do a good 2H or something like this. So, student helps him go to the gifted faster, and go with the level ups faster. And it's not very important perk-wise, but it's important that he can get those stats boosted earlier. And I found it really helping to really, it helps brothers to survive and to fulfill their role earlier. So this is one point. And the other is that for some builds, like to handle with Battle Forge, I don't really need all the 11, uh, 10, 10 perks total. So getting earlier to the Battle Forge on Nimble and then Berzer killing Frenzy, things like this, helps rather survive because you know nibble of battle forge earlier and then helps him do his his killing duty with berserk and killing frenzy so this is where the things start to get really interesting for a bro and it again helps them survive and then helps them deal the damage i really like this for those two and i you know what and that's really the the key man the, the quick scaling when you get past the threshold with your group you see the you see the devastation that is caused upon the land as i feel shinobi would say it maybe maybe in more glorious fashion i'm sure he'd do it but the big thing here is like when you get to that threshold when you get past those first few perks and you realize that the goal to get to nimble to get to battle forge is literally just steps away compared to the be, compared to the great leap it's i mean it's just it's a it's such a rewarding thing to to have you know but in that those first few uh the first few levels that's where i feel like it can you can sit there and wonder but at the end of the day it's up to the, the the user no matter how you look at the perk it's up to the user to keep the guys alive to do the right strategies to understand whether they should be on the front line or back line first to get to that that final that that threshold that that becomes breached so i 100 percent agree i 100 percent agree with that so Anybody else want to add in there? Anything you guys want to say? Any changed opinions or uh, anything? Oh, just a 
student will definitely help you end lineages. You want to you want to add more to that one or? Way to go, man! At every step of the way, more XP, faster leveling. I understand that <clears throat> you'll think that it's a short pickup, not being able to get tier one or two perk right away, but get student at three or four. Exactly like Despicable was saying, if you don't have that weapon yet, grab student. I agree. Yep, one hundred percent. Anybody else? Yeah, well, I'm not sure about adding it to your fodder so they can be smarter in death. I'm not sure about that. But uh, I really like Student. Student is a really good perk. Uh, it's a really good starter perk. I really, personally, I only take it first because if I feel like if I take it second, I've already missed out on part of the perk. So, you know, I'm not getting the full perk that I want it anyway. So I usually just don't go for it. And the second row has a lot better perks than the first row. The first row only has about two or three perks that are like must-haves, you know. The the level three perks are usually a lot better. So it's easy to just snatch that first one. Unless you just got a guy who can't hit the broad side of a barn, then he's going to need help. Yeah, that's it. Right on. The only thing I'd add, the only thing I'd counter to that, Blahman, just to keep, just out of perspective, is that even if you pick it at, round like you go into level five right and you have you have six levels left now that may not seem like the right choice because or like let's say you get to masteries right you could revert back to the levels prior and pick a pick up a perk but one of the nice things here is you're still gaining a faster boost really when you get to level let's say level nine you have to have a accumulated nine thousand uh nine thousand xp to hit that point uh, when you get to level 10 it's 12,000 XP when I say that you're at level 5 I'm saying you have at, to get to level 5 it's 2,000 XP so that massive gap between 2,000 up to 9,000 at level 9 there is a lot of potential to gain that XP I mean and really the chart shows that between level 9 or between level 5 to level 9 you're talking about I have to do quick math here on it but you're doing about this perk is saving you at least 2,000 XP that you don't have to go after. So while it may not make a lot of sense to pick it later, you're still closing a gap, a pretty decent sized gap. Just something to think about, you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's perfect, but really that gap is huge. And remember at level 11, you get that perk point back. You're always gonna get that perk point back at level 11. Two extra perks, there's nothing. Who else loves when you hit level 11 and you have two perks to just to pick something? Who doesn't love that? That is the best feeling in the world. <laughs> that may be just me, but I love seeing two perks at level 11. It's so. the jackpot of the game, you know. It is, that's how it feels. Carver, are you gonna say something? Yeah, I think Blom's got a point in that if you're not taking student at one, you're probably not taking it. Like, why would you take it at five? That makes no sense. You don't decide that someone like if you if you use student at one it's because you think he's gonna make it to 11 if you don't use a student at one it's because you don't like student i i don't think there's many people that in existence that are like yeah i take student at six because that's when they start needing the experience the most you either get the you either get it or you don't which is why we've all given it like ones or basically say we give it on or give it a three because it's only a one for some people so i don't know i don't know i think you're right pogo but blaman is just more practical you're gonna you're gonna take it at one. I don't think people take it beyond like level two. Okay, so let me throw this number at the, you then. If I say that I pick it up at, no, at level five, uh, the the XP that you save between two to five is only three hundred. It's no, actually, it's three hundred and fifty XP from five to eleven is still over two thousand. So what I'm saying is, you're really when you look at the grand scheme of things, if if you want to look at it that way and it seems practical, that's fine. But in terms of the numbers going up to five, and I'm saying picking it at five, if you pick it, if you don't pick it at, and I've done this many times, and the reason why I think it's practical to me is because there's certain perks that save my brother's lives. If I pick Colossus, I'm feeling secure. If the, in the second round, I'm picking, uh, you know, depending on the build and stuff, if I'm picking, you know, if I like, cause I, I use Gifted a lot. If I pick quick hands because I, I want to be able to switch out for whatever the case, whatever the scenario is or where, however I'm building. Or if I wanted to go back to perk one and use recover or want to use it for pathfinder, there's multiple reasons why you would pick it later on. But again, you have to look at the actual difference between two to five or one, technically one to five, you're only saving 300 XP from five to nine plus you're saving over 2000. So to me, that seems pretty practical. 
I understand your point from just looking at the perk and what it does, but for the grand scheme, I'm saving a lot. I'm saving, I'm losing out on 300. That's fair. Yeah, I, I see, I get your yeah. point. I see what you're saying. So, it's just for me, if, if by the time I'm, usually if I got a guy and if I don't give him student first, I mean, most guys, I'm not saying most, I, I say about, a lot of guys I do give student first. Even some of the good guys I don't necessarily give student because they might be lacking somewhere else. But even if if I don't give it to them first, then to be honest, I'm probably not going to give it to him because by the time he hits level four or five, I probably already got an idea of where I want him to be. And I've already planned out all the perks. And student's probably not going to make the list because, you know, I want to make sure I got steel brow and battle for you oh, know what i'm saying yeah. things like yeah. that so you know right. by the time it gets to level four and five like that um where i pick the mastery or whatever i always go back and pick one of the the other ones or whatever but by then i already has an idea of what i want to do with this guy and students probably not even in the selection but that is a good point though because you get it back but you know yeah i don't know well let me just let me just say this one thing and then i think meepo wanted to say something but i just want to say this one thing for everybody who's watching this, I don't want you to feel like it's not practical, like I'm changing the game by doing it at 5. I'm not. I mean, at the end of the day, you're still saving XP. And really, what 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 Blahman and Carvajal's doing is they are getting to level 5 faster than I am. I'm just reaping a different reward at level 5 down, understanding that what I'm saving. And if I feel like I, I want this brother and I know these perks are part of the system for this brother and student was a part of it as well, then that's where I feel comfortable at level five. But like I said, after level five, like level six, I, I, I don't know that I've ever picked it at level six, but up to five, I'm willing to do it because of the masteries. Uh, the masteries not being something that I always pick at that spot. And that'll be in a different video, of course. So I don't want it to seem like what they're doing is te is definitely practical. Technically, mine is unorthodox, but still practical. Uh, Meepo, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, yeah. So the taking it at fifth level, at first I was with them. But after you explained the numbers, the experience, and you are getting it refunded back, I might actually try it, taking it later because I often find myself being, I need a mastery for this weapon. I want this bro to have i don't have the money or i can't find the weapon at that time and he's still stuck in the back row with his pike and getting student at that point i can see where that can still scale and still be appropriate like that unorthodox use of it like just clicked in my head and i'm just like all right i like that yeah and and i didn't say that i didn't make that i don't think i said it 100 percent clear but i think you touched on it really there is the mastery side of it I didn't want to go into Weapon Mastery, but the only thing I'm going to say is, unless it's a polearm, like polearms, daggers, I, those are specific builds that I, I get as soon as I can. But when it comes to any other mastery, I'm looking for a unique weapon for my end game. So at level 11, when yeah. I get two perks, it's like I'm just taking level 5 and throwing it at the bottom. So when I do get the two perks, I can still continue the route I'm going. But if I find a named weapon, by level 11, I'm golden because I can pick that mastery per suit. So that's 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 where I'll end it right there. But uh, yeah, yeah, I love the bat right there, what you just displayed. To me, it's like versatility, and, and I like that. That's like a new move I'm gonna try to incorporate, because you're right, you, you have until 11 to kind of fill your guy out and figure out what weapon he has, because I'm often rushed into it, and then later in the game, I'm like, I shouldn't have done that. For sure. Anybody else? All right, then we'll call it there, guys. This was an awesome discussion. I think we got a lot of uh, unique things here as well. Uh, but um, but ultimately, it's up for you to decide. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about this. And with that being said, oh, and hit that like, subscribe, join the Discord to be a part of this awesomeness. And with that, now with that being said, I will see you in the next one. Bye.